Samsung 2022, it's the BU8500, I believe it replaces last year's AU9000, Crystal UHD TV. Check out the timestamps below for key moments, especially the dimensions. I think it's got a wide central base on this one, so I'll measure all of that up. I'll put a timestamp away, you can find that and just skip through at your own leisure. box we can see we've got that quick setup guide part of the pedestal stand underneath which is two feet and a central piece of plastic pretty much it so I'm guessing the remote and the instruction book is below the polystyrene it's the quick setup guide for two feet that's that plastic sort of cover that goes between those two feet or over them bit of crystal UHD PLS there the shop displays, pull it out, that is the TV out, that's a quick look at the front, from the side, nice and thin, and a quick look at the back there, you can see we've got some energy rating labels, just as I'm forgetting, the only thing left in that box is the remote control and instruction book pack wedged behind the TV. Onto the remote control and instruction book pack. Figure 8 mains lead, right angled input to the TV. CI card slot reader, if anybody still uses those, we don't. Travel A batteries, standard remote and the smart remote. Looking at the smart remote, first of all, got power on and off at the top, voice command button, shortcut to the coloured buttons there, for whatever apps or playback they refer to. That will take you to the settings and virtual keypad on screen. We've got cursor arrows, left, right, up, down and enter. Press play and pause, you've got rewind and fast forward. Back button, home button, volume rocks up and down and in for mute channels rock up and down and push in for guide shortcuts to netflix samsung tv plus prime video and disney plus flip it over we've got that solar cell on the back so if we leave it face down it should keep the charge topped up looking at the bottom of the remote there if it runs all the way flat we've got a usb type c socket there we can use our normal phone charger and usb type c lead there to top that one up now looking at the standard remote, so we've got power on and off at the top, source button, channel numbers, teletext, not in the UK, pre-channel to the previous channel, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute button, channel list, quick access, Netflix, Prime, Samsung TV Plus and Disney Plus. Cursor arrows up, down, left, right and enter. Got the home button there as well. Return. To go back step by step, exit all the way out, the coloured buttons for what they refer to depending on apps and media playback, shortcut to the settings, info for the info bar, audio description and subtitles there, play stop, pause, forward and rewind for apps and media playback as well. Flip it over, push down there and slide away, treble A batteries into the back. A quick setup guide, so the first thing we can see List of the inputs running down the side of the TV and included accessories. Two of you to lay it on a large flat surface. Popping those feet onto the TV there. Two of you to take it, put it on your table. Slide in it shows you there, that plastic cover onto the two feet. So you've got that wide central stand. It shows us there, it's for the 43 and 50 inch model. So plugging it in, turning it on, flipping it over. And key dimensions there for the 43. 50 Q60s as well are included. 43 Q7, but I don't think we're getting a Q70 in the UK. Oop. Dimensions are there anyway. Then onto the Visa mount dimension. So it tells us the different Visa mount sizes for the different size TVs and also the correct length bolts to use. These are the feet, legs, or stand, whatever we want to call them for the TV itself. Interestingly, don't know if it shows up, they are marked left and right, although they look symmetrical. 
Only difference I can see from the back of them, it's got a larger cable groove there for a thicker wire, maybe an aerial wire or a thick HDMI. In this package here, okay, so this part here will clip onto those two legs. See we've got rubber padding or feet underneath to go with the rubber feet on there so it won't slide around or scratch the surface it's placed on, table or whatever. Like a brushed sort of finish on the top. Now I've got the TV laid on a large flat surface. It says left and right or L and R on those slots for the legs to slide into. Also L and R on the legs. It just simply places face down on there, slides all the way up with a bit of pressure. Same for both sides. There we go. And as you can see, we've got those grooves running down. So for an example, you can take a figure eight mains lead, pop it into there, tuck the cable into those grooves, which pretty well. From the front we shouldn't see a cable running down, should be hidden there in that groove behind the leg. USB 5 volt half amp, USB 5 volt 1 amp indicated for hard drive use, LAN or wired internet input, HDMI 2 is enhanced audio return channel, HDMI 1, antenna or aerial input and look in there that's the third HDMI so three HDMI's in total also digital optical audio out. Peel the sticker off there to insert your CI card slot reader if you use one in your country. The last part of this assembly I've not completed yet is just to slide this plastic cover between those two legs so it tells you put it there like so and just slide it on. There we go, it should click into place. Right, nice wide stand there now. Onto the dimensions, this is the 43 inch model. Most critical or important to some people could be the width for this central base. Again, I have done a video, you can put a narrow central base on this TV to suit your furniture. Have a look at the link, I'll put it above somewhere wherever it appears, universal pedestal stand, but anyway. Width for this central base, just over 68 centimetres or 27 inches. The depth from the back to the front, just under 19 centimetres or seven and a half inches. Height, whatever it stood on to the bottom of the TV, about six and a half centimetres or two and three quarter inches to the top of the TV. 62 and a half centimeters just over oh, just over 24 and a half inches the width if anybody wants to know it is a 43 inch model 96 and a half centimeters 38 inches looking at it from the back to that first visa mount hole is bang on 16 and a half centimeters and it's a 200 mil square piece amount M8 bolts. Thickness wise, it's one inch or 25.7 millimeters. Now I've got it connected wired internet, aerial and mains. So I'll do the PVP a little bit and get the screen protector off. I'm going to press a button on the remote to attempt to pair it. Okay, 
okay so two simple options there we can go smartphone quick and easy so we've got our phone connected to the wi-fi with our wi-fi details and samsung account it will transfer all that information to the tv i'm in store so i'm going to go remote control step by step <coughs> uk got that connected aerial if you've got hdmi devices turn them on now and the tv will identify them and label them Terrestrial and digital for myself. Wide internet connection. I'm going to just agree to all and say OK. So we'll do an update, which it will find. So I'll do the update, come back in about 10 minutes when it's complete. Now back in the room, TV's rebooted itself, saying here, sign into your Samsung account. So log into your account, you can download more apps, keep your settings and do your warranty support. I'm going to skip. Again, pop in your postcode for regional services. So the TV's finished its tuning in the background while doing its updates. Primary region is England. Secondary for myself is where my area is facing, which is Yorkshire and Leeds. A quick summary there of the tune channels and wide network. Select your voice command service again. Usually put Bixby on for customers with a generic email. At home, I probably go Google Assistant myself. I'm going to skip in store. And there, link your Prime account, also the same for other apps using your mobile phone or PC. A quick message at top right about brightness optimization. So that should detect ambient light in the room, adjust the brightness accordingly. I usually do use it at home so it's not burning my eyes out late at night if I'm watching in the dark. First thing I'm going to do is go to the retail demo because once I go to the retail demo whatever settings I've made beforehand will revert back. So settings, all settings, Now to general and privacy, system manager, and on to retail mode. Cool. OK, 
Okay, so out of there. Yes, exactly. And I think we note in our story that allies of the Prime Minister were privately overjoyed that it seems like even after this vote of no confidence, what this Okay, so quickly to the other settings, going to go down to power and energy saving. I'm turning the brightness optimization off. I'd probably leave that one on at home though. Motion lighting, definitely turn off. It's trying to dim parts to save a bit of power, but doesn't do it greatly. Auto power saving, probably good to leave on if you've got kids and teenagers at home, no Wi-Fi activity or from your devices, anything like that, it will turn off. And also below that, we've got auto TV power off. So no activity from the remote. It will assume you've gone out and left the TV on. So I'll turn that off as well. Okay. A different story that's been dominating the headlines today as well. We'll look at the front page of The Guardian for this one first. Uh, that Camilla, let's go to the front page of The Daily Express. Same story, very different take. I suppose, as you'd imagine, a different take from The Guardian. Their headline is Furious Pretty Attacks Secrecy of Euro Courts. What's this about? Continuing to come across in this way, we'll go up and up and up. There's a moral imperative. I think everyone understands the instinct to do something to stop those horrific scenes that you described. But the question is, is this the right thing? Is this making it any better? You must have known before you hired the plane that this would face severe legal challenge, that it could be unlawful. And not just because of what's happening in Europe, also because of what British judges would say. Did you consult the lawyers and did they not tell you that it might not be even be able to take off and therefore why did you sign the cheque to hire the plane? Well, of course, we take thorough legal advice when <laughs> designing policy and we make decisions informed with all the relevant information at hand. The bottom line is here that... And, ...and thinks it is good to have a... Don't want that. Okay, so credit to Ubisoft for this one. Again, credit to Ubisoft for that. Quick look at the home menu before I go. 
So you can see at the top we've got search and the media, menu to go to your settings, connected devices and so on. If I go up there to apps, sign into your Samsung account, you can download more apps and so on there. Across to the right, Samsung TV Plus, Live TV, Netflix, Prime Video, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, Disney Plus, Apple TV, Rakuten, Now, YouTube, all four, Alexa, Samsung Health, internet browser, connect your Bluetooth keyboard, do basic internet browsing, My5 and Plex. You can also edit that list to customise it for yourself. Dropping down, recent and what's on now. Down, new and trending stuff that's there available from different sources, so BBC, Prime, etc. Free movies, Samsung TV+, Plus, popular on iPlayer, CBeebies, Prime Video, other popular stuff and so on. So for sort of an entry level to middle of the road TV, it's a pretty good TV. Edge lit, so not going to be perfect on the dark scenes. Bright stuff looks really nice and colourful. Nice and sharp, good colours. Sound is improved on last year's AU9000, which I guess this is replacing, so should be really reasonably priced. I mean, at the moment, the 75 is about 1599 and that's as it's new out. It will drop through the year. Good to show.